In this section, we'll dive into advanced photo editing. We'll remove unwanted blemishes and seamlessly combine objects from different photos. We'll begin with a brief introduction to the gradient domain, where texture and image features can be separated from their appearance. The healing tool will allow us to seamlessly remove unwanted image artifacts like blemishes, scratches, and other small or thin items. In the example below, I removed six different objects from the right image. Can you spot them all? I used inpainting to remove the door's keyhole and the post box stickers. I used seamless cloning to remove the air vents by cloning a part of the blank wall over them. Seamless cloning allows us to seamlessly transfer image regions from one part of an image to another or between two images. Contrary to simple pixel copying, the destination boundary colors smoothly flow into the copied region, creating a seamless transition. As we'll see, there is no need for highly accurate object boundary tracing, and it works well even with very rough and approximate boundaries. The seamless flow of colors also automatically corrects the illumination of the cloned object. So what is this so-called gradient domain? In this video, we learn what image gradients are and how they can be manipulated. We will not go deep into the math, but take a more intuitive approach to the subject. Let's take a close-up look at image edges. Zooming in on a single row of pixels, we can think of this row as a one-dimensional function of the x-coordinate increasing to the right. The value of the function at each x is the color of that pixel. For example, we can consider the zoomed-in edge above the door as a smoothly increasing one-dimensional step function. Recall that a one-dimensional function's derivative indicates the change of the function values as its parameter changes. For example, consider our smoothly increasing step function on the left. Its derivative will peak at the point of maximum change as can be seen in the center plot. Taking the second derivative, that is, the derivative of the derivative, as seen on the right, creates what's called a zero crossing at the first derivative peak, which corresponds exactly to the center of the edge on the left. Given a function's derivative, the integral of the derivative will restore the original function up to some scalar constant. The gradient is a two-dimensional, or more generally a multi-dimensional, equivalent of the one-dimensional derivative. We can think of an image as a 2D function taking two image coordinate parameters, x and y, the function returns the color of that pixel. Since there are two dimensions, there are two directions along which the function can be derived, so the gradient of a function at each 2D point is in fact a 2D vector of the derivative along each of the image axes. These are each called partial derivatives. For any 2D image, we in fact have two partial derivative images, one along the x-axis and the other along the y-axis. All the pixel values in an image are positive. However, since the derivatives measure pixel intensity changes from one pixel to its neighbors, the partial derivative functions and images will usually have lots of negative values corresponding to a darkening along that direction. In the partial derivative images here, the pixel values were shifted and scaled such that zero appears as medium gray, positive values are lighter and negative values are darker. Indeed, you can see that the prominent edges in the photo are either white or black, depending on the direction of the edge. Partial image derivatives can be easily calculated using convolutions. Filtering image F with the appropriate convolution filter kernels, Kx and Ky, will give us the two gradient images. In fact, OpenCV has several functions for doing so. Sobel and Shar can calculate the first, second, third, or mixed partial image derivatives using their respective convolution kernels. Spatial gradient can calculate both dx and dy simultaneously, and filter 2D will let you specify custom kernels. Integration of the two gradient images should produce the original image up to some constant value. Without going into the partial differential equation math, it turns out that instead of the two gradient images, it is sufficient to use the Laplacian image. The Laplacian is the sum of the two second order partial derivatives along each axis. Since convolution is a linear operation, the derivation and summation can be folded into a single kernel L. Again, since the Laplacian image will usually contain negative values, the image on the right 
was shifted in scales such that zero appears as medium gray, positive values are lighter, and negative values are darker. To summarize, we have come full circle. Given an input image, we can calculate its gradients a Laplacian image using convolutions. Conversely, given a Laplacian image, we can use a Poisson equation solver to reintegrate it into a new image. Gradient domain image editing is all about creating and combining Laplacian images and reintegrating to get new images. The gradients of an image represent the texture of the image, the local intensity changes. The actual value of the original pixels will only be determined by the colors set at the boundary of the gradients when reintegrating. This gives us a powerful tool to change images in a seamless way, since as we'll see, the color from the surrounding boundary flows and percolates into the new gradients in a smooth transition.